Hey everybody, Notorious here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about basic canopy anchors. This is going to be the first episode in a two-part series. Um, the second episode is going to cover more complex canopy anchors. I'm going to explain to you when you should use a canopy anchor, why you should use a canopy anchor, how you should use a canopy anchor, and everything in between. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so first thing first, what is a canopy anchor? A canopy anchor is a method used by arborists and tree climbers to tie themselves to a point in the tree that is secure enough to climb on. So they'll take a rope, and as you see, see here, I have a rope, and it's, um, it's out of frame, but it basically just goes right over a limb. And when you install one of these, you want to try and get it as high as you can. Um, if you can't get it too high, you want to at least get it above the first limb. So that way, when you reach your tie-in point, you have something to stand on so that you can disconnect the canopy anchor and advance it higher up into the tree. But ideally, you want to use your throw weight and get a good shot into the highest strong limb you can in the canopy and then you're going to simply attach your the end of your rope to the throw line that's now up and over your limb now it is important to mention when you do choose a limb you have to pick one that you can isolate and what isolation is is it's when you have the rope going around only that one limb. So a canopy anchor, unlike a basal anchor, has to be around an isolated limb. Um, so that's one downside, but in a way it forces you to pick a tie-in point that gives you a clear shot up into the canopy. So it's a plus in a way too. So after you attach your throw line to the end of your rope, you simply use the throw line to pull your rope up and over the limb. And then now it's gonna look like this. You've got the bulk of your rope over on this end here, and you've got the end here. One of the benefits of using a canopy anchor over a basal anchor is with a basal anchor, the climber's weight when it when they get onto the rope, their weight is going to be multiplied by roughly a factor of two, give or take what friction might be on the limb. And that's because it's going up, it's being attached to the base of the tree, then going up over a limb or limbs and then back down. So that causes multiplication of forces. But with the canopy anchor, it doesn't have to be anchored to anything at the base. It's just anchored right at the top. And so there's no multiplication of forces. And that means you can pick smaller limbs without having to worry about, you know, um, it being too weak because, you know, of that force multiplication. Probably the simplest basal anchor and the first on our list is the running bowline. And what that is, is a running bowline is a bowline tied around the standing end of a rope. So I'm just going to tie a bowline around this standing end here, okay? Forgive me, it's cold, so I don't have much dexterity. But now, you have a running bowline, okay? Now, a bowline on its own is not safe enough to climb on. So you need to back it up with something like a Yosemite finish. So I'm gonna tie a Yosemite finish and there you go. Now, I've got a safe to climb on bowline and we are good to go. So the only, this is 
a very basic system for installing a canopy anchor, and it has one major defect. If I pull this up into the tree, what do you think the main issue is going to be? Retrievability or lack thereof. There's no way to pull this back down. So if I pull this up into the tree, if you use one of these running bowline canopy anchors, you better be sure that you're going to make it up to the top so that you can disconnect it or change your system around so that you can get back down and make your rope retrievable. Otherwise, your rope's just going to get stuck in the tree. Um, one way to mitigate that is to um, tie this same system, but you can make it with a longer tail on the bowline. So you would basically tie the same bowline, but with a tail that's long enough to allow you to retrieve the system but that also has a downside that means you have to run from the ground to where your tying point is you have to run that entire length of rope through the knot to create that secure form of the bowline so that's really time consuming and it's just less than ideal let's see what's next so for our next canopy anchor i'm going to show you how to create a running alpine butterfly all you need is the same arrangement a rope over an isolated limb and then what you're going to do is you're going to on the standing end you're going to tie what is called a alpine butterfly i will put links in the video description for um, videos that i've created showing how to tie this knot so i'm going to Create an alpine butterfly. And that is what the finished knot looks like. All I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this working end and very simple, I'm going to put it through the loop like that. Okay. Once again, this is not rocket science. You take the working end and you feed it through the loop. Now, at this point, you are free to pull up the anchor until it wraps itself around the limb. And as mentioned before, um, where the running bowline lacks in retrievability, this system does not. All I have to do to retrieve this system is pull on the standing end and it will come back down to me. And then I just keep pulling and then you have undone the system and you can pull it back over the branch and retrieve it, pack it up, go home. I've been asked before, why can't I just take a carabiner and use a carabiner to connect this system together like this. Well, the problem with this is when this meets the limb like this, it's going to put sideways force on the carabiner, causing it to cross load. And cross-loading is very dangerous because it is the way that it applies forces in the way that a carabiner is its weakest. And they're not designed to take forces in that manner. They're only supposed to take them in the major axis and not ideally, but they have a rating for it. Uh, you're not supposed to do it, but they have a rating for it in the minor axis. So. This setup here, do not do it. It is very dangerous. Also, another concern is this gate, as it's rubbing up against the bark of the tree or the limb, it could feasibly open the gate and release this strand, and then you'll go flying down to the ground. So even with a 
double locking or triple locking gate, this is a real concern. Look up videos online. There are videos showing people opening up these with one hand against, you know, just their body. And it's a scary thing. It doesn't happen very often, but it's a real concern. All right, let's go to the next one. Very quickly, before I move on, I wanted to mention that the major downside to this system of the running Alpine Butterfly is the rope on rope friction that is generated between these two strands here. And the reason this is a problem is if you go to retrieve this and you have a, even one redirect, the friction, look at that, I can barely pull it down. So there are much better options for retrievability and let's look at one right now. Okay, so for our next system, I'm going to show you how to tie an alpine butterfly with a ring. And in order to do this, it requires a little bit of forethought and you're going to have to remember to put the ring on the rope before you pull it over the limb. That way it's in its proper place. There is a trick for bringing the ring over to this side after you've pulled the rope over the limb, if you forget. Um, so I'm gonna link in the description that little neat trick. Uh, but ideally, remember to put it on first, and then what you're gonna do next is holding the ring like this, you're going to just basically tie an alpine butterfly so that the ring stays in the loop. Okay, so now I've got an alpine butterfly with a ring on it. And then all I do is I take this working end and I pass it through the ring. And then I can pull this up all the way and it will lock on just like the running alpine butterfly. The difference though, is that because of the ring, there is no more rope on rope friction here at this moving section here, um, or the running section. And that's because you have, it's now metal on rope. And what that allows you to do is much more easily. Um, so let's say you've got a redirect, you've got your um, climb strand over a limb and you're pulling it down. It's going to be a lot easier to accomplish that than with the basic um, running alpine butterfly. So this is probably, you know, as far as simple, easy, cheap options. This is probably one of the easiest and best that you can choose. So let's look at what's next. Okay, so this next one is a bit of a trick, but also a technique. Um, let's say you put your rope over the limb, but you forgot to install your ring. Um, what you can do is you can take this alpine butterfly and create a big loop in it like that. Then take your ring and put it on to the bite or the loop rather and wrap it on and then you're going to look for the side where um, it's the alpine butterfly has two sides a side where the strands cross so x means no and then the side where they are parallel so parallel means go what you're going to do is you're going to open up those strands 
like this, and then take that loop, put it through. So now you got something that looks like this, and then you're gonna just take that loop and pull it over the ring like that. And what that is gonna create is a double alpine butterfly. This one's a bit messy, but it's the proper knot. Um, a double alpine butterfly with a ring on it. So this is, you know, gonna be a lot stronger than just a regular alpine butterfly with a ring on it, but only at the knot, because obviously it's still only as strong as your climb line. Um, but that's a neat trick if you forget to put your ring on it and you want an alpine butterfly with a ring. Let's look at what's next. This next technique utilizes a small piece of hardware called the Notch Quickie. And the Notch Quickie is a openable sort of micro carabiner in a sense. And the way this is used is you would tie an alpine butterfly and then you're going to open up the slick pin and install the quickie when you install this you want you always want to make sure that this top part of the pin is facing up so that way when you pull it into the limb it's not going to be against all these pins here okay so i'm going to open this up put this in and then close it and this has all the same benefits of the ring except one additional thing it is just as easy to retrieve um but it has the benefit of being able to be opened in the canopy so after you install it let's say you don't reach your ideal tie-in point let's say you didn't get high enough in the tree but you got a good shot and you want to take it and so you climb up to that point and then now because you don't have a ring you don't have to pull your entire line through it you just undo the quickie and take it off and then you can advance it very easily to another limb um, so that's a big benefit of this device this is also great for basal anchors um, i would say if i had to pick either the quickie or the ring i would pick the quickie okay next one this next anchor is what i call the floating ring arrangement now you have your ring pre-installed on the standing end and instead of tying an alpine butterfly with it you're going to tie an alpine butterfly below it so let me show you what that looks like oops Okay, so you've got your alpine butterfly with the ring above it. The next step is to take your working end and pass it through the ring. Not the alpine butterfly, but through the ring. So it looks like this. Last safety step, you're going to take a locking carabiner and you're going to clip it to the loop of the alpine butterfly to ensure that there's no way it'll come undone now you can pull this up to the tree and it'll cinch around the limb but a little differently than with um, the other methods where there's a space in between this method it has creates a little bit of a more interesting 
way of grabbing around the limb. And a lot of, uh, from what I've read, this can actually be beneficial. It's a more natural way for it to wrap around the limb. And also, when you do, you do redirects, this is really easy to pull out, okay? And you can see how the ring is going to float up there at the top. You might not be able to see it, but it's above me right now. And it's right up there at the top, and it's not going to move until the redirect comes out, and then it'll come down back down to you. This system um, can also be done using a notch quickie. I don't have, oh, I do have it on me. Um, so instead of the ring, you can use a notch quickie the same exact way. So that's really cool. Okay, I think we have one more and then we'll wrap things up. Your final option for basic canopy anchors is what's known as a soft eight. It's called that because it's effectively a figure eight descender, but with the part separating the large ring and the small ring being made out of textile. So it's made out of, in this case, I've created it out of um, hitch cord. And I've then girth hitched a small ring to one side and a large ring to the other side. And the way this works is you basically pre-install the small, the small ring onto the non-climb side, the standing end rather, and then you would bring your working end through the big ring. And then, last step, you're going to tie an alpine butterfly below this small ring. So, so a lot like the floating ring, you're just going to have that alpine butterfly there below the small ring. And then finally, just for good measure, we're going to take a carabiner, a locking carabiner, put it onto the loop. So now you see you've got the full system, um, and this just goes right up into the canopy, and you are good to go. This has been part one of my canopy anchor series for basic anchors. Please check out my second video if you haven't already. Um, when it does come out, um, please check it out for complex anchors. Thanks so much for watching. Check out my channel for more hitch how-tos, knot tutorials, and climbing videos. Bye.